So Ben Shapiro, I guess, has uh, like a temporary, like a seasonal show of sorts on Fox News that's related to the upcoming midterm election. And um, the there has been a segment that there have been a couple segments, actually, that Ben Shapiro has done one on this Fox show and uh, also in prior programming that Ben Shapiro has done about socialism or social democracy or Marxism or communism. And it's sort of hard to tell which one it is that he's talking about at different points. And we're going to go through some videos. And the point I want to make to you here is that there is sort of a deliberate simultaneous confusion and confounding that is being done by Ben Shapiro and others. This is emblematic of what many others are doing, where they are both misstating what socialism and social democracy and Marxism are, but also making bad arguments against them. And there's really no better way to explain this to you than to show you some of the clips that we have. So this is from the Fox News show that Ben Shapiro has been doing. And you can tell from the start that there's, there's just something wrong with the presentation. There's just like fundamental factual knowledge that seems to be either missing or uh, being deliberately ignored. Let's start with clip number one. Norway has become the favorite democratic socialist test case for the American left. Venezuela, people are eating dogs in the streets. And Cuba's gone out of fashion. Turns out that when people are floating 1950s Chevys into the Atlantic Ocean, that's kind of a bad sign. <laughs> so the argument here is that you've got Norway and Venezuela and Cuba, and they're all Marxist, or so he sort of initially suggests, but then later he'll, he'll kind of go back with that. And that Norway's going okay, but Venezuela and Cuba are not. So that what the left does is cherry pick and ignore Venezuela and Cuba and only talk about Norway. So just that one idea would be worthy of like an hour of analysis or at least a half hour. But the main points here are number one, actual progressives should talk about the failings of Venezuela and Cuba. I do it all the time. There are people on the left who hate me for that. It's become sort of like a litmus test for the. Uh, the litmus test left likes to criticize uh, uh, others who, who talk about Venezuela or Cuba. The Leninist left, call it whatever you want. But Venezuela and Cuba are authoritarian takeovers of society with populist left wing rhetoric. And as a progressive social Democrat, I'm opposed to that and I talk about the problems there. But then there's the real distortion, which is that anyone is saying Norway is Marxist and Ben Shapiro will eventually say Norway is not actually Marxist. And so the left is also wrong about that. Norway has good and bad things going on, quite a bit of good. But Norway is a social democracy in the sort of standard Scandinavian model period. So to claim that even people on the left are saying it's Marxist, to even mention Norway when talking about Marxism is a joke. Norway is not even socialist never mind communist or Marxist. And then Ben Shapiro immediately goes on to say, but Norway isn't actually Marxist anyway. There are just a few problems with this perspective. First off, Norway isn't socialist. It's a capitalist country burdened with massively expensive socialist redistribution programs. OK, so in, in the first clip, he says Marxist. And now he says it's not actually socialist. That's obvious, right? I don't talk to any serious people on the left who say that Norway is an example of a socialist success or a communist success or a Marxist success. It's a social democracy. It's capitalism. Right. And that is a fundamental distortion here. Uh, he also has talked about actual uh, social democracy, democratic socialism, and some of these same confusions exist. Let's look at another clip. Now, let's talk for a second about the appeal of democratic socialism, because what you hear from the left is that democratic socialism is what exists in places like Denmark and Sweden. That is real socialism. There's only one problem. None of this is true. Nima Sanandanji, who writes for The Stream, he has a very good piece about myths regarding Nordic socialism. He's an author and researcher. Uh, he holds a PhD from uh, the Royal Institute of Technology in Sweden and conducted research uh, at, the, uh, at the University of Cambridge. And he has a great piece about why it is that so many people think that democratic socialist republics are the ones that are really succeeding, when in reality they're succeeding in spite of their socialism. So here's what he says. The success of Nordic countries is based on the fact that historically they have relied on free markets and protection of private property. The only exception is a short period in Sweden where socialist policies crippled growth and job creation. Nordic nations do have high taxes and generous welfare, but in many other regards, they have unusually free markets. That's exactly right. They have free markets. They have relatively high taxes. They have lots of social welfare programs. That's not a debunking of socialism. It's just confirming what social democracy is, right? It's capitalism combined with strong social welfare. He's acting like the writer he cites 
has found some glitch in democratic socialism arguments. No, it's merely a definition of social democracy. It's what social democracy claims to be and is. We can define social democracy many ways, but it's a mixed ideology that promotes progressive democratic pro social justice uh, polity with a capitalist economy, period. And then again, he does more of the same conflation. Danish Prime Minister Lars Rasmussen says after seeing his country held up as an example in the American presidential debate, he told students in a 2015 speech at Harvard's Kennedy School of Government, quote, I know that some people in the U.S. associate the Nordic model with some sort of socialism. Therefore, I would like to make one thing clear. Denmark is far from a socialist planned economy. Denmark is a market economy. When it comes to areas such as business regulations, trade policy, investment freedom, vouchers in the provision of education, elderly care and health care, and partial privatization of retirement savings, Nordic countries are among the most free market in the world. That's right. Holding up Norway or Denmark as socialist countries is wrong, but they are the definition of social democracy. And this is what's missing from the conversation. It is a false debate that is being sort of framed here. One more clip. Hey, Nordic countries did not become rich by relying on socialism. Sweden is the only Nordic country that actually experimented with socialism in the 70s and 80s. And instead, it destroyed, so it, it destroyed Sweden's economy. That's right. They didn't become rich by being socialist. They became rich by allowing for the creativity and innovation of capitalism while understanding the limits of capitalism in some markets, spending enough on social programs to have as many citizens as possible able to afford being part of that capitalist economy because they're not paying off medical bills or student loans. This constant back and forth between talking about socialism and democratic socialism and Marxism and mixing terms and pretending to be debunking something when you're actually confirming it all while speaking really fast and with an indignant tone, it works really well in, on people. And then there's this really important thing that we shouldn't forget. And finally, important to note, that if you're talking about why Denmark does better, Sweden does better, Scandinavian Americans do be Scandinavia does better. Important to note, all of these groups, when they come to America, do better in the United States than they do back in their home countries. So in Denmark, Danish Americans actually do better in America than they do in Denmark. So all of the talk about how, how all of these countries are, are thriving because of socialism is ju just isn't true. Now, again, he says they're not thriving in socialism, but these are social democracies, and this is really important. He says Danish people do better as Danish Americans when they move here than back in Denmark. How you measure that is a serious question, and what does it mean to even do better? They have a higher salary here, because if that's the argument, you've got to add in when you calculate their Danish salary, uh, the health care and the education that they get in Denmark. That needs to be added to their Danish salary if you really want to compare. And then you've got to adjust for purchasing power and you've got to consider self-reported happiness and life satisfaction. If we're just comparing salaries, if that's what we're doing, it really tells us very, very little about whether Danes do better in Denmark or in the United States. So I could go on, but the most important things are around this issue. Number one, don't get confused by social democracy versus socialism because they want you to be confused. OK, number two, don't let other people tell you which system of government a country has in the context of debunking that system of government. You've got to figure out for yourself if they're actually honestly representing what system of government exists there. And then thirdly, please look this stuff up for yourself, because there are some really important conversations happening around these issues. And if you even allow uh, someone like Ben Shapiro to set the, the boundaries and frame the debate for you, you are by definition going to come out extraordinarily uninformed. Send me your thoughts. I'm on Twitter at D Pacman. The show is on Twitter at David Pacman show. Today's program sponsored in part by Blinkist.com slash Pacman. I've talked about Blinkist before. It's this awesome app that I've been using for several months now. And what it does is take the best and most critically acclaimed nonfiction books and condenses them into 15 minute audio books that you can listen to in one sitting. You could listen to 10 books in an afternoon. I know that many in our audience want to expand their horizons and learn more about all sorts of different topics, but we're mostly limited by time to some degree. I know I'm not able to read all of the books that I want simply because I've got other stuff going on, and that's why Blinkist is such a great tool. You can absorb the most important information and insights from a book in one sitting, and our audience can get a seven-day free trial by going to Blinkist.com slash Pacman. If you're watching on YouTube, click the link in the video description. And after that free trial, if you like Blinkist, and I think you are going to like it, you can continue enjoying thousands of condensed audiobooks for about five bucks a month. 
go to blinkist.com slash p-a-k-m-a-n.